So over the Christmas New Year break, I had a chance to get around to adding Taproot support to BTC Recover. So in this video, what I'm going to do is just run through how to use BTC Recover with Taproot Bitcoin wallets, as well as how to use it with some of the more non-standard Bitcoin wallets that have appeared uh, as part of the Ordinals and Inscriptions frenzy, uh, specifically Ordinals Wallet and BitGet. These recovery is going to look at the most common types of issues that I see. So there's people, you know, losing one or two seed words, people swapping uh, some seed words around, and also a situation where people might have a typo in their 12 word seed, but still actually have a valid checksum. So end up with a wallet that has no funds. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Now, the first thing I'll say is all of these demos assume you already have a working installation of BTC Recover. So if you haven't done that, you're going to need to go back to one of my previous videos on installing BTC Recover on the platform of your choice and then come back here and continue with this demo. So the first thing we're going to do is a standard Bitcoin Taproot wallet. So if you've got a wallet that follows standards properly, something like a Ledger, Trezor, you know, pretty much any decent hardware wallet or a software wallet like Sparrow, this is what you're going to use. If you're an Ordinals person, uh, Unisat as well uh, follows standards well. So this is the process that you're going to want to use. And we'll just look at what you're going to do if you're just missing a single seed word from your recovery phrase. So for this one, we don't need to do anything special at all. We can just navigate to our BTC recover folder and we can actually just run seedrecover.py directly. And we'll just use the full graphical interface for this. So basically we'll just say cancel because we don't have a wallet file and we're just going to choose a Bitcoin standard BIP3944 wallet, say OK. And now in this instance, I don't have an extended public key. So I'll just say cancel. And the address that I have that I know was associated with my wallet is this one here. So I'll just say OK. One thing I will add here is that most wallets for ordinals and inscriptions don't actually increment the Bitcoin addresses at all. They just reuse the same address over and over and over again. So if you are doing a recovery for an ordinals based wallet, you might be able to get away with an address generation limit of one. But look, we'll just leave it at 10 because 10 is a good default and we'll say OK. And now here is where we're going to put in our best guess for the mnemonic. So this was our best guess that we had here. So we put in the 11 words that we had and we just say OK. And then we can see here that BTC Recover is going to run. And there we go. So we can actually see there that is our correct seed phrase with all of the words. And if we look closely at it, we can actually see that our backup was missing this word here, protect. So basically, if I just take this, go back into Unisat and try and restore our wallet and paste in the seed words and say continue just to choose the taproot address. You can actually see it's already found the balance that was there for our missing funds. So there you go, happy days. And I just used a single missing word for the sake of a really quick demonstration, but if you have two missing words in your seed phrase, that's not a problem at all either. It'll just probably take a couple of hours to run. Now for our second example, we are going to look at a seed generated using Ordinal's wallet, which like a lot of the wallets that are created in these sorts of frenzies, uh, you know, actually doesn't follow standards well. Uh, so you will need to modify some things before you can use BTC Recover to try and find the seed. You'll see if I say restore wallet and put in that recovery seed and say restore, it tells us that the seed Seed phrase is invalid. So let's recover this seed. So we'll just minimize that and we'll go back into our BTC recover folder that we were in before. And you'll see there's actually a folder in there called derivation path lists. So we're going to open that up and we're going to go into the file btc.txt and we can just open that with any text editor. Uh, look, in this case, I'll just use Notepad. And basically what this file does is tells BTC Recover which derivation paths to check by default. Basically by default, all of the standard derivation paths for common wallets are checked. Um, however, you'll notice here there is a line for taproot addresses for Ordinal's wallet that is commented out with a hash. Now, basically, you'll see here that Ordinal's wallet is actually using a different derivation path to the standard Taproot wallets. So what we're going to do in this instance is just uncomment that line there. And look, if you were sure that this address actually came from Ordinal's wallet and want to speed things up slightly, you could also comment out these other lines uh, here because those derivation paths aren't needed. Uh, in this instance. The defaults really just are a pretty broad search, whereas if we know that it came from Ordinal's wallet, we can just have this one line. So I'll just say save, and then I can just minimize that. And we'll go back to the BTC Recover folder. We'll just double click on seedrecover.py and go through the routine again. So we'll say cancel. We'll just say Bitcoin standard BIP3944, say OK. We don't have an extended public key. And what we're going to do is take the address 
from the Ordinal's wallet and just stick it there and say OK. We'll leave the address generation limit at 10, though again we could just put that at 1. We'll say OK. And now we enter our best guess of the mnemonic. So we'll just put in that mnemonic here, which Ordinal's wallet didn't accept, and we'll say OK. And there we go. So we can actually see that that has found the seed very quickly again. So if I copy that and I paste that recovery seed in, you'll see that it accepts it. And if we look closely at the seed that didn't work versus this one that does, essentially we had swapped speed and spend. That's an easy mistake to make. And when I do recoveries for people, I see this kind of mistake all the time. So we'll just say restore wallet. And there we go. And we can see now that we can log in and we can see our Bitcoin balance is there. So happy days. And this is also a good spot to say if you're someone who has deliberately, you know, swapped multiple pairs of words in your seed phrase, uh, you're going to want to look at this video that I cover over here for how to, you know, deal with multiple swaps in BTC Recover. Or if you're someone who's like fully scrambled the 12 word seed, again, all of this stuff will still work. You just need to combine it uh, with the process using token lists that I cover in this video over here. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is another wallet that doesn't follow standards, and that is BitGet. The example I'm also going to look at is one where the error in the 12 word seed is actually one where it actually still has a correct checksum. So you might not realize you have a problem in your seed. I'll show you what that looks like. So basically, if we are in something like BitGet Wallet and we say we want to import a wallet, and if we put in the 12 word seed there and say confirm, it will accept this seed and create the wallet, no worries at all. But when we get there, eventually, there we go. So we can see that this wallet is actually empty. You know, the Bitcoin value there is zero, which is not what we were expecting at all. So let's recover this seed. So this is our BTC recover folder. So the first thing we're going to do is go back into that derivation pass list file. And we're actually going to undo the changes we made for Ordinal's wallet. So we'll just uncomment all of the standard wallet derivation paths. And we'll comment out the Ordinal's wallet one again, because we don't need that in this case, the one we actually need is this one here. But anyway, um, so basically then in our BTC recover folder, we need to open this folder up in the terminal because we have to add a command line argument to make it work. So now, if you're in Windows 11, you can actually just right click in the white space and open in terminal, which will just give you a PowerShell window in the folder we want, which is useful. Though the syntax here is slightly different. So if I type in Python, um, seed recover.py, you'll notice it actually puts a dot slash in front of it. Uh, everything other than this bit is the same in PowerShell. Uh, alternatively, if you're in another version of Windows, you can also just open up a command prompt and navigate to the BTC recover folder. And how to do that was covered in the installation video, so I won't go through it again here. But the thing we want is we want to run seed recover.py, but we also want to add an argument, which is hyphen hyphen force hyphen P2TR. So basically what we're doing is telling BTC Recover to check every single derivation path for the taproot address type, which is what you have to do for wallets like BitGet. All right, so that gives us the standard security warning. So we can just say cancel. We'll select Bitcoin standard BIP3944. We'll say cancel for the extended public key because we don't have that. What we do have is the address that we were expecting to see the funds at. So we'll say, OK. We'll just leave the address generation limit at 10. And now we'll enter our best guess for the seed. So this is the one that I entered just before that showed us no funds. And I'll say, OK. So that's starting. And we can actually see here, the initial seed guess does have a valid checksum. And there we go. And you can actually see here that it's saying that it found it and matched it on the legacy derivation path, even though we gave it a taproot address. And that is the seed there. So if we look closely at the seed that was found, we can see the issue was actually this fourth word here. So we had previously written down stake, and we can see the correct word is actually start. So again, another common sort of mistake, and I see this kind of thing when I do recoveries for people all the time. So if we take that seed now, go back into the BitGet wallet, uh, and where it says my wallet one here, if we click on that and just say add wallet, say we want to import a wallet, and we paste in the 12 word seed that we just recovered from BTC Recover and say confirm, it'll sit there and take a minute while it imports the wallet.
There you go, wallet successfully imported. And if we click on BTC, there we go. We can see that it has now found the Bitcoin that we were expecting to see. So happy days. So there you go. The important thing to say in terms of Taproot support for BTC Recover is it will work fully with everything else that BTC Recover supports. So things like passphrases are not a problem, Slip39 if you're using a Trezor or whatever, uh, and things like address databases, GPU acceleration, you know, all of this stuff just works. But the important thing you need to keep in mind is if you're using uh, a Taproot address that came from one of these sort of ordinals or inscriptions wallets that really don't seem to prioritize you know, user safety, following standards, or whatever, uh, you might need to tweak the configuration a little bit or add an extra, extra command line argument to sort of force it to check you know, non-standard derivation paths and to treat them as taproot addresses. Now, the other thing that's important to say with BTC Recover is this is one of those tools where you are entering your private key into a computer. So you need to make sure that either you're running BTC Recover in something like an amnesic Linux environment like I cover in this video here, or if you're using a just standard desktop environment, you wanna make sure you keep that computer offline and only reconnect it to the internet after you have moved your funds off your existing seed and onto a new one. You know, if you're someone who is having a go with BTC Recover and need any help, you can definitely just leave a question in the comments. I do my best to reply to everything. And if you are totally stuck and need some additional support, either through a private session or a trusted recovery, uh, you can also request one of those on my website here. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.